996, 997, 998, 999. 1,000. Hmm. Sorry, didn't see you there. Just getting in my wraps. Oh, you want to sign up for a boot camp, do you? Yeah, makes sense. This is no ordinary boot camp mind, but a boot camp of the mind. Friend of the channel, Audible, has commissioned the notorious psyche sorcerer, Darren Brown, to train that old brain with his new podcast, Darren Brown's Boot Camp for Emotion. Link below to enlist, to enroll, to give it a listen, to train yourself. He teaches us how to crack open the proverbial pickle jar. That is our mind, that is our feelings. How to prevent them from overpowering our more logical or cognitive thinking and how to turn our emotions into superpowers. So, let's smash that protein, get lifting, and sculpt that mind with Darren Brown's Boot Camp for Emotion, exclusively now on Audible. Link below. Check out the link. Give it a listen. It's free for 30 days. All the good stuff. All right. You hungry yet? Let's go fix you up with something. Hello, friends. Or should I say, kia ora. Welcome, or hari mai, to my kihine, my kitchen. My sort of makeshift, makeshift pop-up kitchen, which is sort of the vibe of the day, the vibe du jour. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you've uh, taken notice of this over the past month, but there has been a resurgence of a trend in the ASMR gents sphere of American gentlemen or English gentlemen, or in uh, a particularly famous case, an Irish gentleman, making their version of the perfect sandwich. This perfect sandwich compiled by these gentlemen, is an exquisite showcase of the finest ingredients, locally sourced, built with the utmost craftsmanship and care and love. Now, this trend harks back to an unintentional ASMR video, I don't know when it was recorded, something like 20 years ago, something like that, by this very, very cool Irish gentleman who decides to take you through the making of his uh, perfect sandwich. It's incredibly humble. It's very simple. It's just locally sourced uh, Irish tomatoes, tomatoes, lettuce, and ham on pretty basic white bread. Uh, and he sort of describes it in incredibly sort of delicate and precise and wise terms, sort of describing it as bread. All bread should be rectangular. And it's sort of like you've got to butter it like it's a football field. and not have any of the butter going outside of the lines. I'm going to link that video below to you because it's infinitely better than this one's going to be. Anyway, I don't come from England, even though I've been here for the past 10 years, and I don't come from America, and I don't come from Ireland. Well, I mean, my, some of my family do, but that's, a, that's another video. I herald from the humble Aotearoa, New Zealand. And uh, where our uh, scenery is epic, and there are five times as many sheep than there are people. Oh, is one of my lights going to fall over? No, we're good. And we have very strange looking flightless birds who are these, you know, proper, proper thick little boys who sort of defy all um, theories of natural selection because uh, uh, how are they still alive? Uh, and. We have a bit of a sort of makeshift economical DIY sort of um, MacGyvery approach to snacking, to food, and today to sandwiches. And I will try to impart a little bit of me, a little bit of what makes me me, a little bit of my culture, a little bit of my home, 
and a little bit of my childhood, I guess, uh, to you. In this, what I uh, would propose we think of this as, is a sort of midnight snack. Imagine, if you will, that it's late and you're feeling peckish and uh, I don't know how you've encountered me or you're even in my house, my fare. But here we are, and this is what's happening. To level up the idea, if the idea needed to be more complicated, which it probably doesn't, I'm making not one perfect sandwich from a Kiwi gentleman or a vague approximation of one. I'm gonna make three, three examples of New Zealand Kiwi ingenuity, proper culinary delights from down under for you to enjoy or not as you see fit. If at any point you go, ah, oh, Christ, why is he not doing it this way? He should, you know, be using a different sort of bread. That's totally fine. You can make your own sandwich the way that you like it. That's the great thing about sandwiches. So, we are starting with the humble chip butty pronounced for the uninitiated chup butty kiwis hate nouns we tend to sort of swallow uh, as many nouns as we can this is quite exciting doing a cooking video on this on this channel you'll be able to see uh, how well I can multitask if at all two slices of white bread that's going to be a bit of a constant in today's video you can do wholemeal or seeded or anything that you'd like but we're not going to today you might be thinking other cultures do chip buddies yeah they do uh, england ireland scotland whatever um, all of these places have a chip buddy but it is so deeply deeply ingrained in new zealand culture and perfected even to put carbs inside of other carbs to basically wrap anything you can think of in bread so uh, not only a chip buddy but we famously have uh, i'm not sure if this trend has persevered to this day hopefully not says cardiologists but a pie sandwich it's as probably disgusting as it sounds tomato sauce obviously as well mince on toast is a kiwi staple again you might be thinking uh mince doesn't need to go on toast <laughs> um you'd be wrong we do lasagna on bread a lasagna sandwich lasagna butty there must be other examples of this i think like marmite and uh marmite and chip sandwiches i guess crisps if you are if you are from the uk marmite and crisps new zealanders do not differentiate between chips and chips and then crisps as in potato chips we also call chips onto this chip butty really don't overcomplicate building it i like how i'm going to explain this to you like i'm a, a gordon ramsay type figure I should have set up a top-down camera or something, but it's not really about the food. It's about this, but I am going to show it to you. <laughs> so, dear viewer, this is what we're building. Bonus points if, like me, you have made these in the air fryer and they are really crispy. I should be probably trying to get more sort of noises out of the things that I'm doing. We are almost done. What sandwich in New Zealand is complete without what is usually Wattie's tomato sauce? Um, perfection is the enemy of success uh, with these sorts of uh, compilations. So that goes on there. I did make it with the crusty end of the bread, which uh, you may feel strongly about, but I think it looks like a good time. Now, as the Irish gentleman in the original Perfect Sandwich video would have you believe, sandwiches are not meant to be triangular. They are meant to be square, like a football field. And this certainly applies with this one. Hmm. Oh yeah. 
Yes, come on, mate. Now, that looks top bloody notch. Sandwich number one, done. I'm also vaguely doing this Kiwi-themed video in the spirit of uh, the All Blacks match tonight. Well, the, the Rugby World Cup and the cricket, and you know, there are loads of things that uh, Kiwis are, are doing well at the minute. I say, well, we, we play against Ireland tonight, which I'm secretly a bit nervous about. Um, when this video comes out, you will already know the result of that, and so will I. Perfect sandwich number two. We're going to start with two slices of farmhouse white loaf. Mm-hmm. And I should slow down what I'm doing. So we can enjoy it more. Okay, those slices weren't bad. I'm doing well. Have you heard of a toasty? I'm sure you have. Everyone knows what a toasted sandwich is. However, this one is different. Not just because of the ingredients, and you might think the ingredients are slightly weird, but whatever. But because of the method of making them, which isn't kiwi at all. Today, friends, we are going to be making Pokemon toasted sandwiches. Not sponsored, but you know, if I could sell these, I totally would. I wanted to include at least one toasted sandwich on my menu, because if you've ever met any Kiwis, you all know that toasties are near and dear to our hearts. We love them. Um, and much like the uh, infamous chip buddy, the ethos of our toasted sandwiches comes from this idea of really just throwing whatever we have in the pantry onto bread and then cooking it. And so our ingredients, our methods, uh, may shock and surprise you. This, to me, is a perfectly normal example of a sandwich, but you know, I'm sure, I'm sure some of you are going to come for me in the comments, and that's fine. In today's toasty, we will be putting ham, two types of cheese, and pineapple. We are just laying down a kitchen towel so I can just dry off these um, pineapple chunk things prior to them going into the sandwich because do we want soggy bread? No, we don't. We want all of our ingredients as dry as possible. Sorry for the clanging metallic noises. You might find those relaxing. And I'm hoping that you do, even if you don't find the idea of pineapple going on a sandwich. Relaxing. A thin layer of ingredients is the name of the game. So, we have our pineapple drying off to one side. We have our perfectly sliced white farmhouse loaf that we are actually going to butter on both sides. It could be pretty light, you know, to avoid the heart attack. I should say that none of these foods are meant to be particularly healthy. If you're going to come at me and say, hey, why don't you get some greens in there and, or, or whatever. You know, like that's, that's not really the vibe today, sorry to say. The next episode of Cooking with Atlas can, can be salad focused or whatever. We have two types of cheese. We have a grated mozzarella. You can obviously grate the mozzarella yourself if you want to, not just buy packs of grated mozzarella, which I'm slightly embarrassed to be able to show. But it's about using what you have in the cupboard. I loved, as I'm sure everyone did, that scene from Chef. If you haven't seen Chef, see Chef. Where John Favreau's character cooks that toasted cheese sandwich for his son. Good scene, very asmr -y. And in this scene, and in this toasted sandwich, what makes it so special, apart from John Favreau's performance, some very nice cinematography, and the fact that he's clearly playing a chef, unlike me, uh, is that he uses about four different types of cheese in his cheese toasty. I 
I'm using two. We are going for a mature-ish cheddar and a creamy light mozzarella. I've probably put way too much cheese on there, but who cares? It's going to be yum. So, cheese. Done. You can use whatever type of ham you'd like. If you have leftover ham, use leftover ham. If you have pancetta, if you have pork, if you have bacon, chuck that in there too. That all sounds nice as. We are going for, let's say, yay amount of ham. Pineapple, one would hope, is now sufficiently dry. We are going to very gently load that up. You can cut them in half if you feel like they're too thick. Again, like I'm doing some sort of recipe that you guys are going to follow, which I'm sort of not. This is me cooking for you. If you don't want it, you don't have to eat it. It's fine. Now, assuming that your sandwich, and a sandwich it still is before it becomes its final form, assuming that your sandwich is built to your satisfaction, uh, it can now go inside of our Pokemon Toasted Sandwich Maker. <laughs> I'm just going to bring this up here for you guys to see that uh, our sandwich is currently um, being made into a Pokeball. Which is pretty cool. I feel like Professor Oak or something. Variations on the ham, cheese and pineapple toasted sandwich include uh, tinned Waddy's uh, spaghetti or indeed like a, I think my, my stepmother called them cheesy beanos where you'd have your baked beans, cheese and like a little sort of bap or bun that you'd throw in the oven. This is making a very nice sound indeed. Okay, that is so almost done. If you're worried about any eating sounds, by the way, or any mouth sounds, don't worry. We're not about that here. I'm not a, I'm not a mukbang channel. I will dub over any super offensive noises with uh, full credit to the boys. Full credit to the boys. My credit to our boys. Is it, is it full credit to the boys? Just credit to all the boys. We're full credit to the boys. We're getting me free. Happy days. All right, are you ready for the big reveal? What do you think we caught? Oh my god. Yeah, as I said, full credit to the boys. Quite hot. Don't recommend just picking it up like that. I finally caught my ham pineapple and cheese. Let's cut it open. I might need a nice knife for this. Okay, so. Unlike the chip bunny, I do think um, toasted sandwiches were meant to be cut triangular. Sorry, Mr. Irish Gentleman. As decisively as you can, so none of the ingredients come spilling out. Come on, yes. I'm sorry we can't really do like a hyper zoom, but that to me looks pretty awesome. Yum. You can always put a bit of waddies on the side if you need to. Nice. For dessert, and this is a Kiwi classic that you will see at any child's uh, birthday party in New Zealand. Or, if you're me, even adult birthday parties. Now, there were many hot contenders for this final bit of New Zealand magic. Uh, we do many sort of uh, carby desserts, like um, there's a thing called lolly cake. We're, we're known for naming things pretty prosaically, pretty literally. Lolly cake, as one might guess, is a sort of cake substance inside of which you can find lollies, these lovely little foamy things. Other examples of literal, very, very literal Kiwi names include Sausage Sizzle, which, as you can probably guess, is a sort of sizzling sausage. We like grilling stuff, and we like 
easy names. We have two slices of bread. Dissimilarly to how our previous sandwiches have come together, this one doesn't even really resemble a sandwich. It's more of an open sandwich, the IKEA of sandwiches. You could make it a sandwich if you wanted to, of course. I'm not telling you how to live your life. This kiwi treat is called fairy bread. Have you heard of it? Okay, fairy bread, the bread of fairies, is comprised of three very simple ingredients. Farmhouse white loaf, butter, not margarine, not blended spread or whatever you use, butter, ideally, and sprinkles. Or in this case, uh, jazzy sprinkles. Love that. So, you open up these sprinkles. You can guess what I'm going to do next. And you put it on the bread. If you can, get as aesthetically pleasing a coverage as you can muster. That will only make the recipient of the fairy bread happier. On this second slice of bread, I'm going to supercharge this and introduce into the party Percy Peak party sprinkles. If you will. Oh, not as good. Oh, this is harder. It's quite sort of athletic doing this, really. It's a bit of a skill. Okay. That has, ha hasn't come together as well, but I think I just need to practice with it. Happy days. I present to you... I'm not going to be able to show you this. Fairy bread. And if you're doubting the legitimacy of the flavor profiles and depth of flavor at work here, I suggest you only need to try it and your mind will be sufficiently blown. Oh, that is a good time. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go uh, triangular for this one too. We only have one question left to ask, and that is, how do they taste? I mean, they're yours, so you're going to have to tell me, which do you want first? Okay, well, you take half, and I'm going to take half. Cheers. I mean, there's no beating that, really. Like, that is the kiwi sandwich. Okay, moving on to the next. The ham, cheese, and pineapple toasty toasted sandwich. Shaped like a poker roll. Gotta catch them all. All right. Full credit to the boys. My credit to our boys. Is it, is it full credit to the boys? Just credit to all the boys. Full credit to the boys for getting me free. Yeah, as I said, full credit to the boys. Full credit to the boys. My credit to our boys. Is it, is it full credit to the boys? I want you to try these so badly. Please do feel free to follow along at home uh, if you want to. None of this is particularly complicated, although I'm sure that I've uh, given the impression that it is. Right, third, lucky last, the bread of fairies. No, no, there's no beating fairy bread. Like people have tried and they have failed. It's, it, it's the best it, in terms of world cuisine. Nothing tops it. Thank you, uh, Fano, for joining me as I attempt, probably horribly, uh, to impart a little bit of Kiwi culture 
if any Kiwis are watching this, I do of course apologize. You will be saying, bro, we do way better stuff than this uh, in New Zealand and loads of good stuff in New Zealand. But these three sandwiches are some of our greatest, greatest cultural offerings. And I'm gonna die on that hill. Thank you. Kia ora. Thank you very much for joining me. I had a great time. Different video, I know, different sort of thing, but hopefully a good time. If you want to see more of uh, more videos going into Kiwi culture, or even more sort of like bad sandwich assembly, do let me know. I'd be happy to. But until then, see you later. Kaki te hano.